You know that feeling when you go out and shoot and you get something super cool like a sunrise or sunset or like an awesome landscape and then you get back, you're super excited so you download your images to your computer, you go to edit and then you notice, ah, oh, there's something in the frame, there's something that you didn't notice at the time or maybe you couldn't do anything about, maybe it's an ugly fence or maybe it's something just, just, just distracting enough that is ruining your photo. Well, don't worry because I've got you covered because this week we're going to talk about how you can remove anything from a photo using Photoshop. I'm just going to bring the intro in right there, just using Photoshop. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where every week you get a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. This week, we're going to be talking about how you can remove anything from a photo using Photoshop. Now, that goes for anything small, like a dust spot on the lens or on the, on the sensor that's in the sky that's showing up or a spot on someone's face, all the way up to removing people from landscape and buildings and fences and everything. We're going to run through four different tools that you can use because small things sometimes require a different tool and different methods to big things. Now, if you've never done this before, it's actually probably a lot easier than you think. I mostly use Photoshop for this in terms of photo editing. I edit my photos in Lightroom, then I take them into Photoshop just to clean them up and finish them off. So I'll generally remove things, clean them up, remove spots and blemishes and, and things in the sky and things like that, and just clean up. But you can remove a lot. So if there's something like a, like a nice landscape, but then there's an electrical generator or rubbish bin or something like that, it's just ruining it. We can easily fix that. So I'm going to run through four tools that we can use. We're going to dive in some photos. I'm going to show you step by step on Photoshop. So let's let's get it going. Let's open the first photo. So this first photo is it's a shot that was taken at sunrise. We've got this nice road coming through the image, going off into the distance and kind of around this landscape. But I wanted it to feel like it was out in the wild. It's out in the middle of nowhere. And you've got this fence kind of running along the left. You've got this building right up there you've got all kinds of things that i want to just take out so we're going to go ahead and do this with the first tool now the very first thing i'm going to do i'm going to come over to the layers on the right where we've got a background layer i'm going to right click and i'm going to click duplicate layer now that's going to create a duplicate layer which we can work on rather than on that background layer that original layer that means we've always got that if we want to go back if we basically ruin the photo with loads of different changes we can always go back to that original it's called working non-destructively and it's a really good way to do it it's a really good best practice especially when you're removing things because oh, you don't want you don't want to do it wrong remove things too much and then ruin your photo and you can't go back so we're going to do that that's generally what we'll do for every single one now the first tool we're going to talk about is the spot healing brush now i generally would use this for taking out dust spots in the sky or spots on someone's face but we can actually use it to remove some other things as well. So over here on the top left on where our tools are, I'm going to come to here. So at the moment, I've got the patch tool there. But I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to left click and hold it. I'm going to select the spot healing tool. Now, this is going to essentially allow me to, to use it like a brush and to brush on uh, where I want to remove blemishes or, or areas. So we're going to do it with these fence posts here. Now, my brush size is actually about the right size. I'm going to click and hold and just drag over the whole fence post. And you can see it's kind of coloring it in with that dark color to show me that's the selection. Now, when I release, it's gone. And it's essentially just taking the information from the pixels around that to fill that in. So it's removing that object. I can do that for the next one. And I can just keep going down the fence. Now, the spot healing brush tool, it works best on small areas it also works best on on backgrounds that aren't particularly uh, complex so skies no worries uh, generally on the face and stuff like that it's not going to be a problem um, although sometimes you might want to use something else but here the grass is is probably a little bit more complex but because these are quite small areas and the grass is relatively uniform it's able to just take that uh, and apply it so we're able to just get rid of these oops and just take them out. Now you can see it's not always doing a perfect job, but you can just go back over it. I can take out some of these. And I could go through and remove all of these fence posts if I wanted to. I can also scale up the size of the brush and take out this kind of generator here. You can see it didn't do a perfect job there, but if I zoom in a bit, I can just sort of take that out. I could take out things like this cow if I really wanted to, although I have no issue with the cow. But you can see it's a really powerful tool to remove things. Now, 
Where it does not, it doesn't always work, you can reduce the size here and I can take out this pole. That's no issue. But if I try and take out this building, you can see it doesn't work perfectly. That's where we'd need to use a different tool. But you can see generally how quick and easy the spot healing brush tool is to use. So if, you, if you've just got small things, you've got dust spots in the sky, that is an incredibly powerful tool. Now let's open another photo here so I can show you. We've got some dust spots here in the sky. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate that background layer. And I'm just literally just gonna click on these spots. And you can see it is just taking those out. Let's bring the brush size up a little bit. It's just taking those out with no problem. Now, ideally I would have just cleaned my lens, but it's a bit late to go back now. So I'm just gonna take those out, no issues. There we go. And it's a nice cleaned up sky. Now I'd probably take a bit more time if I was doing this properly, but for the purposes of this video, that has worked really well. Now in this picture, we've got this nice meandering stream here, but it kind of leads up to where there are these cars. And that's where I want to show you the next tool that we're going to be looking at, and that's Content Aware Fill. So we're going to come up here to our lasso tool, and we're going to select that, and we're going to use that to create a selection around these cars here. So you can see I've made a, a rough selection around that. It doesn't have to be perfect, just enough to, to very much cover all of the car, but not take too much out with it as well. So I've got a nice selection there. I'm going to come up here to Edit, and then Content Aware Fill. Now this is going to allow me to fill in that selected area using information where I tell Photoshop what information I want it to use. So you can see these green squares come up here. That's the information that Photoshop is gonna to take to fill in this area. It's gonna do its best to match what's around it, but this is the information. So I can draw in, I can hold Alt or Option on Mac, and then just brush in other areas if I want to. Or I can, without holding Alt or Option on Mac, I can brush out areas that I can tell Photoshop, you know what, there's no sky. There's definitely no sky, so don't worry about the sky. Take that out. And you can see over here on the right, we've got a preview of what that's gonna look like. And actually, just even just taking out the sky, it's done a really good job of just working out what should and shouldn't be there. So as I change things, you can see it's just, it's just altering what it's gonna look like. So I'm gonna go ahead and click OK and deselect that. And you can see the cars are now gone. If I turn on and off this layer, you can see the cars and the, and the dust spots as well return. Now let's open another photo. So we've got this nice photo of this lighthouse here. This was taken at sunrise. We're going to go ahead and I've still got the lasso tool uh, selected. I'm going to just draw a selection around this lighthouse. I'm going to come here, edit, content aware fill. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to brush out this coastline part because it's just sea around there. And you can see in the preview, it's done actually a really good job. I'm gonna click OK, and the lighthouse is gone. If I turn that on and off, no more lighthouse. Now, I'm gonna come up here to where we've got these people. I can remove these guys with uh, content aware fill as well. If I just draw a selection around the first guy. Apologies to these people. I'm sure they were just taking nice photos of the sunrise as well. Uh, but we're gonna take them, take them out of our photo. And you can see just by making the selection around this guy, edit, content aware fill. I don't even need to do anything. Click OK, and there we go, they are gone. You can see just how powerful that tool is. You can remove small things, you can remove big things. Because you have the power to set what Photoshop is actually gonna use as a reference to fill in those areas, you can really control what Photoshop's gonna do and how it's gonna affect that and, and how it's gonna remove things. It is a really impressive tool to use. Now this photo was taken, uh, there's a nice kind of river there, so a little bit of a long exposure as well, but we've got a couple of issues. So we've got someone who was obviously in the frame, they're obviously moving around a little bit, uh, looking at the river. They are completely blurred out because of the long exposure, and similarly we've got these two trees here, which are causing us a bit of an issue with motion blur as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate the background layer. We're gonna talk about the third tool. Now this one is the patch tool. And this is a really, really good tool for stuff like this. So I'm gonna go up to where the spot healing brush tool is. I'm gonna left click and hold, and I'm gonna go down to patch tool. 
Now, this is going to allow me to make a selection using the patch tool, so I'll do it around this person. And then I can, I can click and drag that selection over to another spot and try and I'll try and line up the rocks and when I let go what Photoshop is going to do is try and blend that all in together so you can see it's actually done a really good job there let's take out the tree as well because that's causing us a few issues so let's just come up here get a selection around there using the patch tool and then just drag it over try and match up that grass And you can see it's just it's just a really powerful tool for things like that. Now, if you've got a reasonably decent kind of background, if it's not too complex or too too varying, then this is perfect. You can just patch that in. You know, if I had a bit of grass over here that I didn't like, like let's say I want to get rid of this rock for some reason, I can do that with no issues at all. But if I wanted to take out, say, this rock, I need to make sure that I get a piece of grass that's going to match up with that slope. So that's the only consideration, but the patch tool is a really quick and easy way of taking out larger areas if you want to. I'm actually gonna open another image just to really show you that again. So here we've got this nice picture of this lighthouse. Let's go ahead and duplicate our background layer. But we've got all these people walking around. So let's start off with the patch tool. Let's start off with this guy here. Let's draw a little selection around him. And let's move that over. Let's line up the path. Perfect. Let's Let's do these people here. Let's move that over, line up the path. But what we can do, we're gonna move on to our fourth tool here. We're gonna go for the clone stamp tool. Now, it's so up here on the top left, we've got the clone stamp tools just below where the patch tool and the spotting brush tool is. We're gonna go clone stamp. Now, this is going to allow us to essentially copy one part of the photo over to another part, which means we have full manual control over getting rid of areas, big and small. So let's do it with this person here. So you're gonna start off by pressing Alt or Option on Mac and left clicking. That's gonna set the reference point that you're gonna be copying. So at the moment, we're gonna set it to here. And I'm then just gonna brush over this person. And you can see Photoshop is showing me exactly where the reference point is. And it's moving with me as well. Now if I let go and I do go again, the reference point has come down with me as well. So it's keeping a good track of what's going on. Now I can go ahead and set a new reference point. I can keep doing that. It's a good practice to actually keep doing that as well. But it gives me full control over just painting out this person. And you can see that is, that's done a really good job. I can do that here as well. I can come and, uh, and just paint out this person with no issues, just resetting that reference point here and there. I'm gonna get rid of this post as well. And I can just paint them out. I'm gonna increase the brush size a little bit. There we go, with the path. Gotta be careful of uh, things like the path. But otherwise, that's done a really good job. Now, over here, we've got two people stood by a wall. This is quite a complex bit to get rid of. This is quite a complex thing to move. Now the patch tool is not gonna work because we don't have another bit of wall with that slope to take from. We're probably not gonna be able to do a content aware fill and we're not gonna be able to do a spot healing brush. We're gonna have to do it manually with the clone stamp. So we're gonna go in, we're gonna start with just this bit of wall here and we're just gonna start painting them away. I'm gonna keep selecting new points. and slowly just getting rid of them. Now this, so far, has not been too bad. The bit where we just need to be a little bit careful is here. So we're gonna take this part of the slope, I'm gonna press Alt and click, and I'm gonna make sure I'm lining that up perfectly so that I can grab and you can see they're gone, but we wouldn't have been able to do that with any other tool. We can only do that with the clone stamp tool because we need that full manual control and, and be able to do it in really small areas and just gradually paint them out. Now we've still got this one guy here. 
I'm actually gonna go ahead and grab the patch tool for this one. So do a, a little selection around him. Let's grab a little bit of path. There we go, perfect. And now if I turn this layer on and off, you can see all of those people are gone. Now, that's four tools for getting rid of things in photos. You can get rid of small things like that, big things. They all have their own uses. I love the patch tool, it works so well. Spot healing brush tool, so quick and easy. Content aware fill, that can save you a lot of time and you can get rid of big chunks of your photo. If you have like a, a car door covering a bit of a photo or, or anything like that, content aware fill, content aware fill can just really save you a lot of time and, and do a big job for you. And of course, the clone stamp allows you to get in nice and close for some manual work and make a big difference to your image. And here we've managed to get rid of all of these people with no issue at all. Now, if you have any tips of your own about how to do this or how you do it or anything like that, pop them down there. I'd love to build our community where we all help each other. There's always new things to learn. There's always new things to learn. So I'd love to hear about that. I'd also love to hear about any kind of best practice stuff that you do. For me, it's kind of all about just keeping it subtle and trying to minimize how much I do this because you can get really carried away and go completely overboard. And essentially what happens is you, you end up ruining the photo. You end up going way too far and it doesn't look good at all. So that for me is what I do, but I'd love to hear what you do as well. If you do have any questions, of course, pop them down there as well, as well as anything you'd like to see in a future tutorial Tuesday, make sure to subscribe if you're new as well. We've got these every week, plus all kinds of other content as well. If you like the video, I'd really love it if you gave it a little thumbs up. That always helps us out, and I really appreciate every single one of you who does that, as well as every single one of you who doesn't do it. I appreciate everyone just for turning up. And of course, as always, Thanks for watching.